I want to start this video by actually comparing the multi-core score of the Snapdragon 8 Elite against the Apple A18 Pro and the Dimensity 9400. And next, the 3D Mark Wildlife Unlimited score of the Snapdragon 8 Elite against the Apple A18 Pro. So yeah, the Snapdragon 8 Elite could be the most powerful CPU and GPU inside a smartphone in 2025. But how? Well, I'll tell you that. Hi, I'm Ashad. You're watching Tracking English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. This year, the Snapdragon 8 Elite is based on the same Orion CPU that was introduced first in the Snapdragon X Elite, which is why the Elite in the name. And finally, a Snapdragon chip is based on a new 3 nanometer fabrication mode, and it's based on the TSMC N3B node, which is said to be more efficient. Gone are the days of the efficient cores, my friend. The Dimensity 9400 doesn't have it, even the Snapdragon 8 Elite doesn't. So what do you get? A two prime cores clocked at 4.32 gigahertz and six performance cores clocked at 3.5. 53 gigahertz. So when we asked Qualcomm, they said they don't need the efficiency cores because the performance cores are efficient themselves. And each of these clusters also has their very own 12 MB L2 cache, which means that the cache is a whopping 24 MB now. Of course, you've got an Arduino GPU inside. Snapdragon now doesn't mention what Arduino GPU, but we're all presuming it's the 830 and it's a 3.3 gigahertz GPU and it uses Splice technology. So you've got like three clusters of 1.1 gigahertz each. And the GPU itself itself has its very own 12 MB L2 cache. Apart from that, you get support for LPDDR 5X RAM, you get support for Wi-Fi 7, and for the very first time, Bluetooth 6 as well. So what you get is extreme performance, so you actually get over 10,000 points of multi-core score with the uh, you know, Snapdragon 8 Elite, which is not possible on the A18 Pro or even the Dimensity 9400. Similarly, Antutu scores are crossing 3 million points now, which is like a massive jump, right? From like scoring 2 million points on most Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 phones to now directly 3 million, that's crazy. But in single-core performance, Apple is still leading the charge though Snapdragon is cutting the gap quite a bit. Now, Snapdragon also says that it is a more power-efficient processor, so it should be able to manage like heating better. But that's something that we'll be able to tell for sure once we start testing these devices that come with the Snapdragon 8 Elite. The other thing that we need to check definitely is if the you know 8 Elite will do any sort of thermal throttling. So yeah, stay tuned for our reviews. The Arduino GPU also brings 40% improvement in gaming performance and 35% improvement in ray tracing performance. But what is more interesting for me to see is the fact that this GPU now supports Nanite, Unreal Engine 5's Nanite technology. And this technology improves texture like crazy. We actually saw like a demo live and it was very, very impressive. Games that will look like that with great textures on a small display. Oh my God, it's going to be crazy. Also, I played Grid Legends, which is going to launch in December. And that's like a proper console game that was launched in 2022. And yeah, it does look very, very impressive to see a game like that run natively on a phone. Massive improvements to gaming for sure. However, one thing I definitely want, not just for Qualcomm, but also for the OEM partners is to figure out, you know, game developer relationships so that they can actually beat Apple at porting console quality games to the phone. Of course, all this has been encapsulated by Qualcomm in numbers as well. With CPU, we are looking at 45% gains and with web browsing performance, there are 62% gains. We actually saw that live in action in a benchmark. Now, one thing we're noticing from the very early tests is that it looks like the Snapdragon 8 Elite is going to be more powerful and more power efficient than the MediaTek Dimensity 9400. Of course, performance is going to be excellent, but this time the ISP is doing a few interesting things because what Qualcomm is calling this is an AI ISP now, which means that apparently OEMs like you know Samsung, Xiaomi, Vivo, all of them have been asking Qualcomm for bringing AI specific improvements to the ISP so that they can use AI to do things better. For example, there was a demo of a pet jumping and the camera capturing all these photos and then picking out the best shot from it. Similar to what Google does with the best take thing. And there was this demo of object eraser in videos, which Qualcomm says is definitely coming to one brand phone soon. And I'm thinking it's going to be Samsung. There was also this very interesting demo of a portrait lighting feature where you could relight the face with colors of uh, different lights according to whatever you liked and it was very very well implemented and I would like to see this in future phones as well. Of course a lot of the ISP improvements will also mean that you know Sony Litia sensors that come in the future will also benefit a lot from that plus for the very first time this uh, uh, Spectra 
triple 18 bit ISP can actually do three simultaneous 48 MP capture of 4K 30 FPS videos with zero shutter lag. Basically, camera performance is also going to be excellent. Oh, by the way, there was one more demo where they showed that a Qualcomm reference design was actually capturing more details than an iPhone 16 Pro Max, but it was doing it without HDR. With HDR, the details will go down. Now, with all of these improvements to the Snapdragon 8 Elite, the phones that you can expect with the 8 Elite are really coming very soon. To India, the first phone that's coming is the Realme GT7 Pro and world over is the Xiaomi 15 series. There is also the OnePlus 13 that's going to be coming really soon. There's the iQoo 13 which has been confirmed to come with Snapdragon 8 Elite. Oh, it's going to be a very fun time. In fact, even on stage we had Honor and Asus go up and show their new devices which is the Honor Magic 7 and the Asus ROG Phone 9. In fact, we got a peek at it and it does look good. So from whatever I've seen of it till now, the Snapdragon 8 Elite seems to live up to its name. It could be an actual elite processor in flagship phones in 2025. But of course, we'd love to test them out really soon. So what you need to do is hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more content. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and take a look at Hawaii.